I am the throne, baby. I am the Bowery! Why does the Bowery King hate the high table? The John Wick franchise has introduced some memorable characters, but few have been as impactful and charismatic as the Bowery King. He rules as the undisputed king of the extensive underground empire set up by him, and he is one of the very few friends that John Wick can count on in his hour of greatest crisis. But what makes the Bowery King side with John and defy the all-powerful high table, the organization that controls every aspect of the criminal underworld. In this video, we will look to find some answers to this raging question from the subtle hints that the movie has offered. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. So who in this cruel world of ours is going to help you? Does the Bowery King respect John for turning him into the man he is? While nothing much can be specified about the actual origins and backstory of the Bowery King, his introductory scene in John Wick Chapter 2 suggests that his story with John Wick goes back a long way. This badass crime lord, played by Lawrence Fishburne, reveals how he started off from a lowly position of a henchman to some gang. He was attacked by John Wick, but the assassin did not kill him and gave him a choice, where he could either move his hand and bleed to death while trying to shoot John or he could save his own life. He chose the latter and over time he developed his own empire. The Bowery King clearly has a lot of gratitude for the hitman because his opportunity made him rise among the ranks. This near-fatal encounter changed his life and not only did he become a better fighter but he also used the lifeline to improve his position. When a severely injured John seeks shelter and assistance, the Bowery King doesn't simply kill him in his helpless state which would have been the easier way out for the Bowery King given John's excommunicado status. Thus, aside from his personal vendetta with the High Table, the Bowery King's respect and gratefulness for John makes him side with him. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Raise a hand if you can hear me, John. Why does the Bowery King risk his life and career for John Wick or for his own interests? Granted, he's extremely grateful for the way John Wick shaped his career back in the day, but is it enough to risk all that the Bowery King has achieved over the years? For a man as intelligent and efficient as the Bowery King, this does seem like an unlikely emotional decision. Besides, he could simply spare John's life out of gratitude and he would have stayed out of harm's way. What makes the Bowery King help John with arms and ammunition to kill Santino, thereby risking a direct confrontation with the high table? Yes, there is more to this decision than just gratitude. John Wick makes it clear that Santino's meteoric rise through the ranks of the high table would not bode well for the Bowery King. He suggested that any assistance to John Wick will result in the elimination of Santino and the Bowery King would not have to worry about any competition. This was a lucrative Deal, given that the assistance was quite indirect, where he would just have to hand over a gun and seven bullets to John. The Bowery King seemed rather amused that someone can have the audacity to assassinate a high-ranking member of the high table, and he wanted to see whether John Wick could actually perform the impossible. It is quite likely that during the events of John Wick Chapter 2, the Bowery King acted more in accordance with his interests than his love and respect for John, or his apparent enmity with the high table. How do you feel? Because I am really pissed off. How did the Bowery King's perspective change in John Wick Chapter 3? The first seeds of hate for the High Table were planted during the events of John Wick Chapter 3. Up until now, the Bowery King had mostly functioned outside the direct hierarchical command of the organization. The High Table was aware of his networks and activities, but the organization did not consider him to be important enough. The Bowery King deals with the underbelly of the society, and his main resources, such as homeless people and the soup kitchen, did not really fit into the classy and glamorous glamorous world of the high table. He was insignificant, working on the sides, until he became instrumental enough to help John Wick in assassinating Santino. John also broke one of the fundamental rules of the high table by killing Santino inside the Continental Hotel, 
and when he was declared excommunicado, the high table also came down heavily on those who helped him. The adjudicator was sent out to deliver the table's justice, and the Bowery King was held accountable for supplying weapons to John Wick, and the adjudicator ordered him to step down from his position. The Bowery King was too proud and arrogant to abide by such demeaning orders, and he defied the command. However, the adjudicator later came back with her more seasoned assassins led by Zero. She inflicted seven deep cuts on the Bowery King for his disobedience, but she made the crucial mistake of sparing his life. The pride of this self-made king was now wounded. The scars from the cuts healed with time, but the disrespect and disdain shown by the high table was something that he wouldn't allow to go unpunished. This is the point where John Wick's war with the high table became personal fight for the Bowery King as well. He realized that the organization was all about a self-proclaimed hierarchical status and a system that functioned on ancient rules that lacked rational backing. The Bowery King probably wanted to take down the roots of the organization because his freedom had been affected and it was more than just payback for him. His standoff against the high table was also to protect his dignity, status and respect that he had created through years of hard work. The climactic moments of John Wick Chapter 3 reveal just how bitter and disgusted the Bowery King had grown and he was relishing the opportunity to team up with John and to destroy the authoritative organization for good. It is also quite likely that the High Table had previously clashed with the Bowery King and stripped him of his powers. They could have been the ones to assign him the responsibility of the management of the so-called lowly crimes and put him in charge of the underground networks and soup kitchens. Such an origin story cannot be ruled out because it explains why the Bowery King is so fed up with their high-handedness. It also makes sense why the Bowery King never showed any signs of respect or loyalty towards the organization even before it came down so heavily on him with the punishment. Goodbye, my friend. It's hard to die. Does the bad blood continue in John Wick Chapter 4? Well, the movie opens with a scene where the Bowery King assists John in tracking down the leader of the High Table, the Elder. John Wick hunts him down in the middle of the Moroccan desert and clearly the conflict with the organization expands exponentially. The Bowery King seems to have declared an all-out war against the High Table and he is not forgetting his humiliation anytime soon. However, in this movie, the High Table seems to be more concerned about bringing down Winston than tracking down the Bowery King. Marquis Vincent de Gramont, who is a high-ranking member of the organization, is tasked with the job of teaching Winston a lesson, but he never really goes after the Bowery King. One of the main reasons behind this could be the fact that the Bowery King is extremely difficult to trace. It has been established already that the man is well versed with the underground networks and drainage facilities. He could just about be anywhere at any time. Besides, he is a man of great resources and the criminal underbelly of the society owes their allegiance to him, which makes it even more difficult to track him down. He teams up with Winston this time round, with both men bound by similar ambitions. When the duel between John and Vincent de Gramont is announced, the Bowery King even drops by with some words of encouragement and provides provides a special bulletproof suit and a gun for the seasoned hitman. Kimber 1911, 45 ACP, seven rounds. Does the Bowery King succeed in bringing down the high table? Exploring his story arc going ahead. The answer to this question is both yes and no. The Bowery King did successfully manage to assist John and Winston enough to defeat Vincent in the duel. John earns his freedom from the high table even though he is mortally injured and Winston gets to re-establish the continental New York and continue as the manager. Thus, it is safe to say that it is a victory for every one of them in this conflict with the high table. However, the organization is far from destroyed. In fact, if anything, the recent release makes you realize just how deep and powerful the roots of the organization are. People like Vincent are perishable, but no one is indispensable for the organization, not even their leader the Elder. It is almost impossible to take down the High Table completely because that would effectively mean destroying the entire criminal system all over the world. As of now, the Bowery King seems more than happy with the results and he walks away with John Wick's dog after the assassin is seemingly dead. But it might be far from peaceful for this iconic character. The High Table might come down on him with better preparations next time because of how much he assisted John Wick. Besides, he doesn't seem like a man who is willing to bow down, and the high table doesn't take too kindly to any form of dissent. 
It will be an interesting journey down the road for the Bowery King and we would be surprised if he broke his peace with the organization. At the same time, an uneasy truce cannot be completely ruled out if the high table decides to allow him to conduct his business independently. Overall, it is safe to say that this memorable character played by Lawrence Fishburne is not going anywhere and you can expect to see a lot more of him in the upcoming projects. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the Bowery Kid and tell us if you had any other reason regarding why he hates the high table. Also, tell us what you think will be his story arc going ahead. I am all that you deign not to look at when you walk down the street at night. The Bowery is mine. Mine alone.